How many know that God, when he appeared unto Abraham, this is what God said. The very first message God gave unto Abraham is the following. Abraham, in blessing I will bless you. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't a Jew. He wasn't part of the people of God. He wasn't a called out one. He was worshiping the sun and the moon. God appeared unto him when he was a foul, dirty, stinking sinner. And God said to him, Abram, in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. Nothing about Abram, all about God. Abram, I will bless you. Abram, I will multiply you. Okay? Now, the Bible comes in Galatians chapter 3 and says, This promise was made unto Abram and his seed. Not saying seeds as pointing unto many, but seed as pointing unto one. But jumping down to verse 29, it says, Now, if we are Christ's, then are we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So you are an heir of what? To be blessed and to multiply. Apply. Nothing from your side, everything from God's side. So why is it that people don't really flow and live in the blessings? Because people are too aware of curses. Now the Bible, God said to Abraham, every person that will bless you, I will bless. And every person that curse you will be cursed. So people can't curse you. If they curse you, they will get the curse. So why is it that curses work in churches? Because people say it, they believe it, they proclaim it, they prophesy it, you know. And even under the law there were some curses. But that same chapter of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the whole curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So that, here it comes again, the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we might receive the Spirit by faith. So from God's side, the only thing that God is interested in is blessing you and multiplying you and He's trying to do it and you are free. You are supposed to be blessed. And these blessings, the Bible clearly says, the way it's going to come to you is because of the cross of Christ. Now, what happened on the cross? If we think of the cross, one of the things that will stand out is the blood of Jesus. Okay? The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us. So if it is true that God wants to bless us, and it is true, how do we get stuff from God? We get stuff by asking, by praying. So many people, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. James chapter 5, is that all right? You have not because you ask not. And you do not get because you ask wrongly. Is that all right? So how do I get stuff? By asking for stuff. In Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus taught them how to pray, you know what verse 8 says in Matthew chapter 6? It says, your Father in heaven knows that you are in need of these things before you ask. Okay, so before you pray, God knows that you need things. Now, how is it if God knows it before you pray, how is it that you pray when you know it and you still don't get it? First John chapter 3, verse 20, 21, and 22 says the following. Beloved, if my heart, the word there is conscience, if my conscience condemn me, condemn me, okay? God is greater. Number three, and he knows all things. Now, we just did Matthew 6 verse 8, that God knows that you are in need of these things before you ask. So if your conscience condemns us when you pray, God is greater than your conscience. In other words, the stuff that condemns you, God is greater than the stuff that is busy condemning you. But God is also greater. He knows that you need those things. If my conscience... Condemn me not. Then have I boldness, confidence with the other Bible, say towards God. Number six, and whatsoever I ask, I receive. 
Many times your conscience would leave you alone in your business, would leave you alone through your life, and you will go on for weeks, and your conscience will not bother you. Till you really need something and you want to pray. Then you go and you say, Father, and your conscience jump up and it says, Who are you? Who are you? Remember at the traffic light? And then your conscience, all of a sudden, this man that you haven't heard from for weeks, all of a sudden he's back chatting you. Come on, anybody in the house? Have you heard him? And then instead of asking, you now jump to the repentance trip. Father, now you're not asking forgiveness because you're sorry. You're now asking forgiveness to get rid of the voice so that you can ask for 3,000 rand. So you quickly say, Father, I ask forgiveness that I did that. Father, forgive me that I didn't bring my tithe last week. Father, forgive me that I didn't put in the offering. Father, forgive me that I cursed the cat this morning. Father, forgive me when I skipped the red robot. I cursed the man and it was actually my fault. And now all of a sudden when you open the one, all the stuff that you did the last week bombards you. And now you're not confessing it before you because you want to be holy. You're confessing it because you want to ask 3,000 rand. No, you think you're going to quickly get rid of the guilt feeling so that when you ask now God is going to say wow angels did you see how he became holy we got to give him 3,000 rand he just got holy in a minute and we've got the wrong totally wrong approach towards God that's the one approach the second approach I want to pray now before I ask I must quickly confess because sin is in my way so I come father Now, this is our approach. We're going to shock God now. I mean, I'm his child, and I did it behind his back. Now, God's going to find out. Now, I come with the attitude, I don't know how to break the news. And God sees my attitude, and he calls the archangels. He says, hold my hands. I, I, I can see Quibus is coming, and I know what he's going to tell me now today. I don't know if I'm going to hold the throne. I, don't, I, I think I'm going to faint. So God says, angels, please come help. Bring some water. Bring some, you know, bring some, something. And, God, and I come, I said, God, God says, what did you do this time? And I said, Father, I don't know how to say it, but... God says, oh no, oh no, get more angels. This is bad. What did you do, my son? And we think we're going to shock God out of his holiness by breaking the news that I actually lost it and I cursed the cat out of the tree this morning. And when I'm finished, God says, oh, well, how are we going to do it? I said, Lord, if there's any way you can forgive me. So I skip the cross. I skip the blood, I skip the blessing, I skip the redeemed from the curse of the law. I come, if I now confess the right way, I'm going to be so holy because in my mind, it's not that I want to be sorry or forgiven. I actually want 3,000 rand to pay the car. Okay, nobody in this house, but maybe somewhere in the future you'll meet somebody that do not get answers for prayers, and you can help him by saying this. Can I go on, or do you know that, uh, you know, we have a funny approach towards prayer? How come, if the Word of God is so true, and God knows all things, and God is greater, and you know what you need, and then we still pray. How is it that we, after it all, still don't get answers to prayer? Hebrews 4. Verse 14 says, Inasmuch then as we have a great high priest, who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith in Him. Where's our confession of faith? In Him. In me? No. Verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities, listen to this one, and liability to the assaults of temptation. But one who has been tempted in every respect as we are yet without sinning. Verse 16, let us then fearlessly 
and confidently and boldly oh just just look at this way because we have a high priest that understands that you are liable to the assaults of temptation because of that let us come boldly fearlessly confidently to the throne of grace not God's judgment throne like most preachers will preach end time stuff to the throne of grace when I come there I don't find judgment I find grace mercy let's read on let us come confidently to the throne of grace the throne of God's unmerited favor to our sinners that we may receive mercy for our failures it's slowly beginning this revelation where do I find mercy for my failures my shortcomings my infirmities my weaknesses my liability to the assaults of temptation where do I get mercy to help me to get grace to get rid and over of the stuff where do I get it oh so where's the throne in the most holy place people have this thing we gotta get ourselves pure clean and we do it with repentance and then we're gonna start asking God for stuff don't be ugly just be honest when we go to God there's a conscience that's always trying to get us to know that you are not in the proper position to ask of God. I just, I even haven't even read my full scripture through yet. But we have this thing that's been built into us for ages. That God has got a throne. Brother, if you want to reach that most holy place. That holy of holies. If you want to get into God's presence, sin cannot enter into God's presence. That's why people don't get. Because they've got a conscience that's been taught for thousands of years that if you go to God, you must know that God will only listen to you if you are pure and holy and clean and have repented and fasted and prayed. Man, and you've sought His face for ages. And then maybe God will give you a hearing ear and says, Have you seen my son? Fasting 40 days, haven't slipped his tongue for 24 hours, haven't cursed the cat for 71 days. And now God says, listen, roll out the red carpet. Here comes my son. Everyone, what do you want, son? You've been so holy the last two months. What is it that you need? God says, I can't help but give it to you because you performed so well. Brother, I fast. I pray. Brother, I pray. I read Bible. Brother, I read Bible. But since 2000, when God spoke to me and said, you're not going to intimidate people with your Bible reading and your prayers. You do that, that's your personal Christian life. You can teach that at conferences and tell people how you study Bible, how you pray, but it's not the rule. That's your spiritual life. It's got nothing to do with it. But you can inspire them by telling them how you get, how God meets you. Share it with them. Inspire them. But when it comes to me, it's only grace. Grace, grace, grace. to chapter 9 of Hebrews. I didn't even go on to receive mercy for our failures. Where do you get it? At the throne. And find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. Okay, we are behind schedule now. Let's go to chapter 9 quickly. Verse 8 says, The Holy Spirit points out 
that the way into the true holy of holies is not yet thrown open, thrown open, as long as the former tabernacle remains a recognized institution and is still standing. But the appointed time came when Christ appeared as high priest of the better things that have come and are to come. Then through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not part of this material creation, he went once for all into the holy of holies of heaven, not by virtue of the blood of goats and calves by which to make reconciliation between them, but by his own blood, having found and secured a complete redemption and everlasting release for us. So if the blood of bulls and goats could clean people's bodies, verse 14, how much more surely shall the blood of Christ, who by virtue of his eternal spirit, who his own pre-existent divine, has offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice to God, purify your consciences from dead works and lifeless observances to serve the ever-living God. The former tabernacle. Moses built a tabernacle. There must be an outer court. This is the outer court where all the people could gather. Then there's a holy place or an inner court. Then there's the most holy or the holy of holies. This is the former institution. One, two, three. If this is still recognized... The way into the true Holy Valleys is not thrown open. It's tough now. In the beginning, God made heaven and earth. God has translated you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Abraham had two sons, they were two testaments. Either you're in darkness or you're in the light. Either you're a son of God or you're a son of Satan. Either you are born again or you are not. The former institution had to ritual. That's why it brought another dimension in. The, the, the one that must remain has only from the first glory to the second glory. From the law towards grace. From works towards mercy. There is no in-between thing anymore. In the old, they always hovered between the holy of holies and the outer court. And they always had to get the right sacrifices. To end. I'm sorry if I break the news to you tonight. But coming into the New Testament, you're either out or you're either in. And the way into the true holy of holies is not thrown open as long as you still recognize the four Former institution, full stop. That's the whole book of Hebrews. How many doctrines are built on the tabernacle of Moses? That's the first glory. That was fading. That was not anymore. I'm sorry. Study the book of Hebrews. God does not recognize it anymore. Say, so if we want to go through the ritual, we must be in the law. As we're in the law, we're back in Moses. As long as we're in Moses, there's a veil over our face, and we'll never be able to enter the second glory, which is remaining, which is greater, which is everlasting, eternal, immortal, continuous, unbreakable life without death. From now on, it's the most holy is open. I don't have to do anything to go in there. I go with all my failures, all my sins, all my temptations, all my weaknesses. Somebody's got to get it. And I go right into the very throne room of grace with all my sin, all my mistakes, all my failures, all my problems. I don't go because I did. I go because He did. Brother, what will happen if we can get this message tonight? Freedom. Total freedom. Are you ready for verse 12? I will be merciful and gracious. Uh, 
I dare you read the scripture. Toward what? Oh, no, brother, towards me. Okay. I wonder how many are getting it. I will be gracious and merciful towards. Oh, I thought them. And I will remember their deeds of unrighteousness no more. God says, when I say, the next verse would say, when God says a new, the old is ready to vanish and be put out of disposal altogether, to be disposed with altogether. So God says that former institution is out. The law is out. The outer court, inner court, holy of all is out. I only have a most holy. It's thrown open. There's no division. The middle wall of partition has been broken down by the blood of Jesus Christ. The veil has been stripped away by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can enter not when you did something. You can enter just as you are with all your sin, all your failure, all your mistake. And he says, when you enter, I'm going to be, it's the throne of grace. Where will I will find mercy for my failures. So I enter the throne of grace. And he says, I am gracious and merciful towards your sin. And the deeds of a righteous, I will remember no more. God says, why do you feel Condemned in your conscience. Do you not know that I am greater and know all things? If I understand he now has mercy towards my sin. Not me only. My sin. Then my conscience will not condemn me because God's not thinking of what I did. God is thinking, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. I know what you need before you're going to ask. But I first want to see, do you believe that I am greater and have got nothing against you? No matter what you did this morning, I know what you need. Come ask. But if you come with boldness, hey, whatever you ask, you will receive. Why is it that we don't break through into the eternal, everlasting, where we keep on saying, man, look at me. I can give you, I can give you an example of how to get. Yeah. And though the righteous fall seven times, he just get up because he's righteous. God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we can become the righteous of God. So I fall, and now I lie. Liebe Jesus, Herre Jesus, my God, when I'm going to win and I'm going to win, Oh, Jesus, Lord, I did it again. He says, when? I don't remember anything because I decided in my great grace to remember your deeds of unrighteousness. I have decided to be merciful and gracious toward your sin. I know it's a tough message, but it's going to set you free. For a few people that cling on to the old traditions, I'm sorry for you. If you want to impress God with seeking Him, I want to help you. He's not lost. <laughs> but we do seek Him. But with the right motive behind it. I do it because He says I must do it. Out of obedience, I don't do it to get from Him. Why do we want to give uh, if you perform, you get. If you don't perform, I'll take it away. That's not godly. That's demonized, man. That's from the pit of hell. That's why we struggle to meet with God because we think if I did it wrong, God's going to take it away. Brother, I've messed up more than anybody and God gave me more. 
Because I didn't go with a repentant attitude of ach liebe Jere, God Almighty, Father, bin ich ein klein Jere ist in mein Herz, ach liebe. Yeah, I didn't go with oh Jesus, oh Lord, oh, here he is. <laughs> yeah, I went with Father. You are much bigger than me. You knew my thoughts afar off. You know why this happened, that happened, that happened. Ek is te stupid, ek weet nie eens hoe kom dit gebeur. And if I must try and find out why it happened, I'm going to find fault with that person, that person, that person, that person. It happened. You know why? So because of grace, I say, forgive me. I accept it. Lord, thank you for an awesome meeting tonight. Thank you that the cripples are going to walk, the blinds are going to see. I come stand up and I preach and I pray and I minister to the sick like I'm the most holy person on the face of the earth. And if my mind comes and say, hey, yo, kwas. I say, wait. Come as los kwas ding tot na di I'm now busy with sick people. And I'm not going to allow you to come with your kwas gevoel in here. This person needs healing. So I'm here because of grace and I want to help the person. So I minister. So I'm not in with, oh, here is forgive me because now that thing that the cost thing has come back and is going to hinder me to minister to the sick. No, I'm not trying to get right quickly to get the sick healed. I did it, God. No, I did it. You know why I did it? You knew it before I did it. So it's not going to stand in the way of healing the sick. It's just going to stand in the way if my conscience allow it to stand in the way. So when the meeting is finished, I go pick the cost story up and I say, Lord, I remember tonight that I did that and I ask forgiveness. Not to get right with God, to get my conscience cleared. I'm right with God when Jesus died on the cross. I only do it to get right with myself and my conscience. So the blood of Jesus makes my conscience clean. Would you read the book of Hebrews and see God says, those whom he has justified, he has perfected for always. Did you know that God says, you are holy? You are, oh, but the Bible says, you must be holy. The Bible says, you must do that. Yes, if you want to go for that, go for that and struggle. Or read the new. For God has done what the law could not do. Listen to this. I'm just picking up here and there. By sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. Please listen. God condemned sin in the flesh. What flesh? Of his son. Subdued it, amplified, overcame it, deprived it of its power over all who accept that sacrifice. Please, Church of Jesus Christ, take the word of grace tonight. God condemned sin. God subdued sin. God deprived sin of power. In the flesh of Jesus Christ when he crucified him on the cross. If I accept that sacrifice, sin is condemned in me. It lost its power. It's deprived of power. It's got no hold on me. So I don't care what I did. I do care. But according to the message, I don't care. You know I care and you know you care. You know you don't want to live in sin. But don't let sin trouble your relationship with God. That sin question is only to get your conscience clear. It's got nothing to do with your relationship with Almighty God. It's got nothing to do with your entering the most holy place. It's only got to do with you feeling guilty or you feeling free because of God's grace and not because of your works of righteousness. Full stop. I know it's tough, brother. I know it's tough, but that was Martin Luther's revival. That was Spurgeon's revival. That was Finney's revival. They knew it. They knew it. They knew it. Unfortunately, many of them became legalistic afterwards, but the beginning of the revival was always a message of grace. 
Are you struggling with this message? So when I do wrong, God didn't court me out. Yeah, he knew. I didn't repent so I can ask. I do it because I want my conscience not to condemn me so that I can be bold and get whatever I ask. Can we go to Isaiah 1? Verse 16, wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Are you ready, church? Come now, dear Father, help. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Here it comes. Here it comes. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Sins What did he say first? It is scarlet. What like scarlet? If I come to the throne of grace, I have a high priest that knows my weakness, my infirmities, my temptations, all my sin. That's why he came to condemn sin in his flesh. That's why he deprived sin of his power in his flesh. So that I can now in my flesh with all my wrong come boldly knowing that his blood has paid the price. He opened the way into the most holy valley. So I don't go because what I achieved or what I performed or what I got. I go because I understand how much he loves me and how much he cares for me. So I go. And though God says... Come, let us reason together. Get the scripture. It's one of my oldest favorite scriptures since I was four years old. Come now and let Tony get new. Come and let us reason, says God. So God comes, stands, is new. Would you reason with me? Come, let us reason together. So God, I want to reason with you. Though your sin are like scarlet, to me, it's white as snow. God said, son, would you reason with me? I said, never God. He says, well, people do. Come and let us reason. If you come to me and you've messed everything up that you stood for all your Christian life, if you messed everything up in one day and you have not yet repented, when you come to me, Although your sins are now like scarlet, would you reason? To me, it's white as snow. Not you. Your sin. Why? Because he just told us there's sin and unrighteousness. I will remember no more. I will be gracious towards their sin. I will be merciful towards their sin. God says, I'm not going to only be gracious to you. I'm going to be gracious to the mess up you made. Imagine if we take this message. Whatever we ask. We receive because my performance thing has totally died I know there's nothing I can do but believe God's grace because if I got it because I've achieved what if I mess up next week that's why people come and say Kubis, what more can I do to get my healing every day in this ministry, people would ask me this question. 
Chris, what do you think me and my wife can do? You know, she's got this cancer now, seven years. You know, we've been to TB Joshua. We've been to Benny Hinn. You know, we fast, you know, every Wednesday we fast. Brother, you know, we have cleaned our house. We've taken all the idols out, all the chineers of poppies, all the Chinese cups, all the sauces. God, we've taken all the tinglings off the roof. Oh, brother, we have sprinkled ash around our house. What more can we do? I said, for one day in your life, don't do anything. Go smoke a cigarette and drink a bottle of brandy that you know you did wrong. So that you can once for again come and repent, really repent. Maybe you will get something from God. I did not say sin. I did not say don't repent. I did not say do wrong. Do what's right. Jesus said when you've done all you're supposed to do, say we are unprofitable servants. When you've done all you're supposed to do, say we are unprofitable. What is Jesus saying? He says, when you've done everything that I told you to do, come and say, I don't deserve anything. It's still just grace. Brother, I'm coming back to some points that I made in this message. If God healed the sick because for a few days you didn't curse and you fasted, what happened next day if you cursed and don't fast? Then God withdraw his hands. Then you must go back to fasting and prayer and then we fall into a rut of legalism and we think God moved because we did. No, God didn't move because you did. You know what happened when you did that? You cleared your conscience and you felt good. Please. That is the book of Romans. Paul says, does this mean I can go on sinning? He says, no, this means I will not sin. Because I understand I belong to another. I don't belong to the former ritualistic, legalistic, Judaistic thing. Okay, let's read on. Verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Romans 8 verse 3. If I accept the sacrifice, I get it. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. If you are obedient and accept God's reasoning, you'll eat the good of the land. If you rebel against this grace message, you will be devoured by the sword. It's been there all our lives. Come and let us reason. Not though your sins were, they shall, you shall be. No, no, no. Whiter than the snow. White. Than the snow, wash me in the blood of the Lamb, and whiter than snow shall I be. No, your sins. Sorry. What happened if you mess up tomorrow? Your sins are still white as snow. What happens if you really mess up? Your sin are still white as snow. That's why many great men of God in the past never made it to the end. Because they preached this holiness message with works of righteousness. And then they made a little mistake. And their consciences condemned them to a place where they lost everything. Yeah. But if you are obedient, oh Lord, God, thank you for the cross. Lord, I messed it up. Now, this is not easy, brother. This is not easy. If it was easy, we would all be floating. Brother, to get victory over that conscience. Oh, here Jesus. Oh, here God, I get all the other She said, when did you do it before? I can't remember. He says, would you reason with me? I decided not to think of it. I decided to be gracious and merciful towards your sin. I decided that your sins are white as snow. Now, who are you to come and remind me of your sin? Oh, but if we say we have sinned not, we lie. Of course we lie. (laughs) You stupid, of course you lie. But if we confess our sin, he is rightful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Oh, so I must repent to get... No, 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 no. Because we have an advocate with the Father. I pray. Not because I repent, because I have an advocate. So what does repentance do? It just clear my conscience for me to have boldness in what He did. Not because I repented. So the boldness is not in my repentance. The boldness is now I know He did. That's why I now come. Yeah, it's a total different picture, man. Huh? I'm just going to close out. I would have loved to do Hebrews 10. He says, let us come boldly to the throne. No, to the Holy of Holies. On a new and living way. Now, I checked a couple of translations. Do you know what the next word is? By. The blood of Jesus. Not because of the blood, not through the blood, but by the blood. So I come because of what the blood says, by the blood of Jesus. I'm not coming, you know, I must first do this, first do that. It's by that blood, the flesh body that was crucified. That I can, that's the reason I can now come. Not because I repented, not because I fasted, not because I prayed. I come by the blood. Through the veil, which is his flesh, where God condemns sin in the flesh. A new way. Because of my grace. I don't care how wicked you think it is. Would you reason with me and think you are greater? Or would you accept the fact that I'm greater? So from my greater viewpoint, your sins are white as snow. Is that a license to sin? No. That's a, that's a freedom to say, wow. I can actually make it. With all my hang-ups and complexes. With everything I feel is wicked and rough and me. What I'm trying to say is, God wants to do for us exceedingly, super abundantly, far and above all that we can even dare to think or pray for. Never mind just getting what we ask. Above it. Why? Because He sees our sin as white as snow. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.